What is your title? What would you like to go by? Uh, like job wise? Oh, whatever. Or, you, no. Photographer, artist. I yeah, I guess like freelance photographer uh, slash artist. Awesome. I'm sure. Okay, cool. And um, where do you currently live? Right now, I'm moving. So I'm in the middle of moving, but I'm moving to New Orleans. But I've been living in Baton Rouge for, I was born and raised there. And I've been living out there now for, let's see, like seven years or so since uh, I did college and whatnot. Okay. Okay. So when you say born and raised, like what, what part of the Baton Rouge community were you raised in? Yeah, I was raised over by Cedar Crest right behind the Volvo station. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very so cool. We, I was raised there and we moved over to Old Jefferson, uh, that area by Woodlawn, in between like the middle school and the high school. Wow. Okay, so you've got deep roots in the community. Those are areas that have gone through significant change, I feel like. Uh, well, let me ask you, how old are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 28. 28. Okay, so then you've kind of seen the shift in how these neighborhoods are changing. Um, little by little and vastly at the same time. But I love uh, while reading some of the stories on your website that part of the work that you do is is largely rooted in community, not only the community you're raised in, but you can see how um, how a community is viewed, not only from someone who lives within it, but someone from the outside, too. Can you talk a little bit about how you view your own community? Yeah, I was raised, like I said, over by Cedar Crest, and we moved to Old Jefferson. Um, I went to middle school over off of Perkins. So I've always kind of had, like, a, I don't know, a, a, an interest in trying to, like, see the whole city for, like, what it is, not, like, what I want it to be. So uh, I thought representation matters a lot, and that's kind of something that was instilled in me from uh, a young age. So I try to like drive around and that's kind of where the photography stuff started was just like being in my parents cars driving around or riding around you know and then visiting family in different parts of the city uh friends that owned different businesses or their parents own stuff so i try to just get a good idea for like the whole city because baton rouge isn't like too big but it's laid out very vastly yeah. And when when you first got into photography and you're driving around and seeing um, the landscape, the community through your eyes, um, I mean, your photos are so striking because we see it through your lens. Right. But what do you notice first when driving through a community? What types of businesses are you looking for? Yeah, uh, well, I first started off doing like live music photography and that was a good feel to kind of get me comfortable uh, photographing like a lot of different lightings, uh, kind of interacting with people in the community. And then that kind of stemmed over to the street photography stuff when I started to kind of get a better idea of what I wanted to do the projects about. Um, I moved from like one part of mid city to the other part of mid city. And then that like kind of made me We'll take a step back in a way and kind of look at like um, accessibility and how close you are in proximity to uh, things that people go to every day, you know. Uh, so from that, I was kind of driving around and I guess like mostly started off in like mid city in the North Baton Rouge. I tried to find different local businesses that I felt like weren't um, as known if you lived like in the other part of the city. So I know so like since Baton Rouge is kind of like laid out very vastly, it's kind of, you can kind of get comfortable staying in one little area and you don't venture out. So I figured like with my photography, people already, if they were following me, they had the interest to kind of see stuff, like you said, through my lens. So when I'm in those areas, I'm kind of just like taking my time uh, driving around it, kind of getting a feel for like how people interact with the businesses throughout the day. And then that kind of gave me an idea of like when I could go photograph certain areas, depending on like how busy they were. Yeah. And I love all of your Food Mart series because 
you know, you can drive through to any part of town. You can drive down Florida and not think twice about a food mart and where it's located until you really stop and look at one of your pictures and you go to see just how you start noticing those little details. At least I did like what they sell, how many people are there? What are they going for? Are their needs being met there? Like there's so many things that make you think when you actually sit there and look at one of your photos. I think a lot of, well, I'm glad like the subtleties kind of stand out, but like the nuances, I think, especially being like a, a black photographer, I try to focus more on like the nuances of like, uh, being black or my personality and then also like different people in the community and those businesses too so when I first started to photograph the food marts it was kind of uh I was like is this a good idea like if I photograph this will people understand like the the point of like why I'm photographing them and I think the more I got comfortable photographing them um the easier it got to kind of relax and then photograph this stuff the right way. So like you said, a lot of the different businesses I'll go to and photograph, they have a lot of signage that's like very colorful and eye catching. Um, you know, they'll have different window displays. If you go into the stores, they're kind of like laid out pretty similarly, but then you kind of notice like that, like a, like the Asian supermarket on Florida is going to be totally different than like a more like convenient style, like Asian supermarket. So the one in Florida in particular that I just mentioned, that one's got like, you can go buy a whole duck in there. You can buy, you know, like different like uh, produce or different types of like poultry and things like that that you wouldn't normally be able to get unless you go to like a Whole Foods or something like that. But I think it's important to kind of uh, focus more on like, contributing to like the local econ economy than like shopping at some of the bigger uh, stores. And that's when the pandemic happened, that kind of heightened the photography, I think. And it got people on their phones more rather than like going around interacting with spaces. And then I think people were able to kind of, the photos started to resonate more and the businesses started to resonate more. And uh, people started pushing that whole like shop local uh, experience more. So I think that kind of helped my photography. It's kind of like right place, right time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Especially if you're bringing business towards them, because I'm sure um, in certain communities also, when you pull out a camera, people just don't know what to expect because it's not one of the typical, you know, tourism sites, yeah. you know, it's when people go down to the levee and they love to take pictures. But if you're pulling up from, to a food mart on Florida, sometimes you just get stares and <laughs> yeah. I that, wonder if people are thinking, well, what's so special about this place that makes him want to take a picture? Yeah, when I first started to do the photos, I guess just like from my personality, I'm kind of like a extrovert introvert. So for me, it was like I would get to a space and then I would realize like, oh, man, people are like looking at me more than what they should. And it kind of changes the energy of the space and then like what you're trying to like photograph. So. I got into the hang of like waking up, well, I'm a morning person, so I, but I got into the habit of like waking up early and then driving around and around like six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning. And then I was able to kind of like photograph the businesses uh, just by themselves without like a lot of foot traffic or anything like that. But I'm always mindful of uh, communities, like different communities and like how they react to people who they don't see normally and then also like me like pulling up in front of the business and then pitting my windows down and like hopping out of my car with a camera to kind of uh kind of cause more commotion than what I would want you know so yeah. I think it's like you said it's it's interesting to uh to just get the representation that you're trying to capture and then have people in the community see that and then be able to like uh be empowered by that. Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome because it's such a unique and it's a, a purpose driven project because you had the intent to go seek out these places. Was there any place you went to take photographs of where you didn't necessarily, uh, where, where you felt out of your comfort zone, but you felt it was necessary to photograph? Yeah, I think part of my photography, I think, is getting to a point of being uncomfortable to find comfort in 
whatever I didn't think was comfortable. So uh, whether it's like some of the photos behind me, like uh, the sugarcane photos, for instance, like that was very like spare of the moment. Like my mom called me. I was like, hey, do you want to come ride with me to this uh, to the funeral home and collect some flowers? Saying, uh, yes, yeah, so I just like kind of got in the car with my mom. And then that was very like spine, uh, serendipitous, I guess you would say. Like I saw the fields, they were burning them. And I just kind of thought about a lot of the like the cultural aspect of that. Like if you live in Louisiana, you're probably used to like seeing the like the black smoke kind of cross over the Mississippi and kind of hang around that downtown LSU area, Southern area. And then it just kind of grew from that. I just think it's try to try to be uncomfortable while I'm photographing it. Cause I feel like then I'm, uh, if I'm too comfortable, I'm not really capturing the essence of the space. So I try to blend in with that energy as much as I can. That is so cool. Cause not only is that a chance for someone else to learn, but it's self discovery for you too. That's pretty incredible. I think I learned that from honestly, like probably meditation, just mm -hmm. like I've been, I got into that when I was like 15, 28 now, most of these photos I've been doing in the past, like two or three years in particular, they, uh, yeah, I tried to like instill that stuff I learned through meditation. Um, through the photos. So I think a lot of like when people see them, the photos can be kind of calming. And then it's also gets people to kind of uh, think more critically about the space that the business is in or the people that I'm photographing in that space. And just kind of like how they connect with those people or the community. And a lot of these businesses can be like cultural hubs for catching up with people um, that you don't see every day or just kind of like figuring out what's happening in that part of the community. That's awesome. That is actually really cool. And I hope people are able to see that and identify with that through your work in terms of the photos behind you. I think, I think that's how I first found you. Someone had posted your sugarcane photo, or I think the library had, had posted about your exhibit. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a moment because that is just so cool. But with this sugarcane burning photo, uh, did you say they, they were taken in Bush, Louisiana or Kima? Yeah, Bush, yeah. In Bush. Yeah. It's so striking because, like you said, if you live here, you're used to seeing the sugarcane fields burn. They burn old crops. They, they, that, that's not an unusual sight. But for some reason in your photo, it's just striking because you captured it in a moment in time. The smoke is still stuck in the air right above the field. And there's a sign. And it almost seems ominous. Um, is yeah. there a story behind that photo, specifically the one above your left shoulder? Yeah, so uh, let's see how that kind of like all laid itself out. I had uh, I got kind of comfortable photographing like a lot of the food mart businesses and stuff, but I didn't want people to solely uh, base their opinions about like my artwork off of that. So I tried to venture out more. Um, and I've always kind of wanted to do more landscape photography, I guess you would say. Uh, I guess that's like unconventional for uh, like black artists, I guess, in particular to kind of do that work. Uh, but I kind of got into that idea of just trying to photograph local stuff in general and kind of playing with that idea in my head for like a days, a weeks at a time. And then I had booked two exhibitions that I was a part of and those had came and gone. My uh, grandmother had like passed away mm. uh, the like the day of well her funeral was like the day of like one of the exhibitions. So uh, the photos, the sugarcane ones, those were taken maybe you know, like two or three days after the funeral. And like I was saying earlier, my mom called me and uh, was like, "Hey, do you want to ride with me?" And uh, we didn't really think anything of it more than just like going to get the flowers from the funeral home and then like you know coming back to Baton Rouge but once we started to drive out in that area I've been in that area a lot my, a lot of my family lives in New Roads and that's kind of the the back way I guess you would say to get to it in New Roads uh yeah as soon as I saw the the flames and everything I was like it's like one of those things like I always have my camera and of course like the one day I don't have the camera it's like the day they like it these are like kind of like 
uh, like time moments, like a very like rare thing to kind of capture. So we went and uh, photographed. And then she stopped and she let me photograph some of the stuff. I think I had like a, a different camera on me that I don't normally shoot with. And it had like four or five photos and it was black and white film. So I was like, oh, I kind of want to capture this in color to kind of get the uh, the different like elements of the photo, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we went to the funeral home. We uh, collected the flowers. My mom brought me back to my house in Baton Rouge, and then I like, immediately like grabbed like all my camera gear and I went to the store off of Government Street, bought some film, and then uh, not to not I wasn't driving crazy or anything, but I was definitely like, had some urgency behind my drive, and I was like, I, I gotta go get this before it's over, you know. And I got kind of lucky, I guess you would say, because they were still burning, the fields were still burning. And this was maybe like two or three hours after I had saw them initially. Uh, So I just kind of loaded, drove to different spots around the fields. Mm -hmm. And then that's how I got like most of the images. The one with the sign in particular, uh, a lot of the photos I do, they'll kind of be at like weird, areas to stop and photograph so I had to kind of like drive around the area a couple times to kind of get an idea of like how the traffic was flowing and then I just kind of stopped my car in the middle of the road and that's like not the safest thing to do no one was on the road (laughs) besides me but I stopped there because I figured that was like a very powerful image to kind of get the sugarcane sign Mm -hmm. in front of like uh, the fields burning with the truck in the background with the flames kind of looked like they were like almost like right on top of the truck yeah kind of how I I remember when I got I took the photo and I snapped a few at different uh did like one vertical one horizontal and I was like I had, had like chills and I was like oh this this is it this is, these are these like really great photos and I went to another spot and kind of walked into the field a little bit there and it was like uh, kind of surreal, I guess, to say, because like I guess my grandmother had just passed away. I just had some of the bigger exhibitions in uh, my life. And then that was happening. So I kind of felt like that was her kind of looking over me and kind of being like, capture these photos. These will these will resonate for a while. And then that's how that happened. I think you mentioned the, the library stuff. Yeah. And that kind of led to the exhibition at the library. How did how did the library found find out about your work or about you? How did that all come about? I well, I guess like firstly, like I am like a big fan of libraries. Uh, kind of like when I was a kid, that was like one of my favorite places to go, the Jones Creek Library. Uh, but I lived over by Mid City by Goodwood, and after I had taken the photos, I was trying to uh, figure out the I guess like marketing. I guess you would say but I also wanted to display them. And I kind of figured it would be harder for me to kind of just like walk into a, uh, a gallery or a museum in Baton Rouge and just be like, hey, do you want to exhibit these photos I have? Like, like, you know, that's not really how that goes. So I think like on a whim, I think I woke up one day and I was like, I'm just gonna go to the library and just kind of just shoot my shot uh, as the millennials say, you know? So I went there. And uh, I met Melissa, who works over in the special collections department of the library. And I told her I had an idea for some photos for an exhibition if they were like interested in doing that. And uh, so she took some time to sit down with me. I showed her the few of the sugarcane photos and she liked them a lot. And she was like, oh yeah, this is like, these are really good. I think we would like be interested in exhibiting them. And I was like, well, that's, I'm gonna follow my intuition a little bit more now. And uh, I guess like I got comfortable with that. And then I was like, well, since I've got you here, you know, uh, I've got these like food desert, like food mart photos of uh, businesses in North Baton Rouge. And I showed her those and she was like more excited about those than the sugar cane photos. And I thought it was gonna be kind of like the opposite of that. But she was like, oh, this is exactly what we're like looking for to exhibit. And uh, they I went ahead and like scheduled the, the date for me to do the exhibition. And uh, 
that was like my first solo exhibition. So that was like a big learning step I think I had was just kind of to really just like reach out to most of these businesses or spaces in particular and then kind of just present the work to them like in a professional way while also being relaxed and not making it seem like it's a do or die situation. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, you, you, uh, uh, shoot your shot and you got it. And it sounds like these projects are, are, are really rolling here. I understand you're working on a coffee table book too. Yeah. So I figured I wanted to kind of market my stuff in different ways. And I figured the photo book would kind of, uh, present the work in a more accessible way to people who don't have like the time or the will to kind of like go to a museum or gallery and kind of stand there and look at stuff. Uh, I think I had, I had the photo book idea in mind, but once I, I had a meeting with uh, a curator at the museum, I mean, the New Orleans Museum of Art. And uh, we talked for about an hour, hour and a half, uh, just about my work in particular. And then that kind of instilled some more confidence in the work. And then when I was like getting ready to leave, he showed me a photo book of a a photographer who photographed uh, different landscapes in Louisiana and then compared them to like landscapes in Antarctica. And I thought that was kind of a different uh, coffee table book, quote unquote, that you don't normally see. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, well, if people really like landscapes, like they would probably, you know, enjoy the sugarcane photos and the food mart photos. And uh, so I kind of had that idea. And then I kind of was just like, if uh, no one's going to make the book, then I'll kind of just like kind of design it myself and then put like the PDF file out there for people to kind of like look at and browse. And then so that's what I'm doing now. I'm reaching out to uh, like a bigger publisher right now. Um, out in New York, trying to get them to hopefully like cover the cost of everything. That would be kind of ideal. Uh, but yeah, I think the sugar cane photos and the food mart photos, I think they'll resonate with people that live here. And then also just people who are interested in seeing like different types of like landscapes that are quote unquote, like unconventional mm-hmm. because of like the flames and uh, the agricultural like impact of that. And then also like, the food mart photos, how they're shot and everything's on film. So that kind of adds like an extra element to it. There's like more grain to the photos or like how film and lighting react together versus like shooting stuff on digital. Mm -hmm. So I thought that with all those different like nuances, kind of like what I was saying in the beginning of the meeting, kind of like just tying all that into the book itself. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I think it'll be, I think it'll be different. I had a uh, reach out to some of my mentors and they were like asking for some advice about how I should do this. And they were like, Bruce, you're kind of farther along than what we were. So you, you're, you're kind of like teaching us how to maneuver in certain uh, fields. That's awesome. I mean, you're creating opportunities for yourself. And I think that is fantastic. And for people who are watching this, who want to see more of your work or even put in a pre-order for the book, where can they go? Yeah, so you can always follow my work. If you have Facebook, I have a Facebook page with all my photos on there. Um, I normally post a good bit of photos. Usually I try to post like two to four a day. Uh, So that can be found on my Facebook page. That's BQW Photography. And my footwork can also be found on Instagram at that same name, uh, BQW Photography. Or you can type my name in, Bruce Q. Williams. Um, and I also have a website and that website's bqwphotography.myportfolio.com. Very cool. Well, I look forward to seeing how it all comes together, but so proud of you and what you're doing and showcasing not only North Baton Rouge, but really our entire community. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. I try to, the older I get, the more I'm like, I should expand the work outside of Baton Rouge. So yeah, the past like six months or so I've been photographing. Uh, just like different areas in Louisiana in particular. So a lot of more stuff in New Orleans and then like the surrounding areas of like New Orleans and Baton Rouge. 
Cool. Well, I look forward to it. Thanks for chatting today to kind of explain and just give like a explanation of what you're doing and your background to this point. That's really awesome. Yeah. And I guess I would just say for anyone who's like interested in kind of being a uh, artist to kind of just like uh, believe in yourself and uh, as like one of these like workshop uh, people told me to kind of just like ask, ask and then ask more and then eventually like the squeaky wheel gets the oil so yeah just kind of just be confident in what you're doing and always try to like learn more that's like my big thing so yeah, thank you for taking the time to, to do the interview oh gosh that's awesome it's a big part of our community and, and i can't wait to see the success from here on out thank you yeah yeah soon. absolutely